Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the South Jersey Field of Green Space for Autism Celebration Dinner. Thank you, Zach. Thank you, Tommy C, for all you've done to help me put tonight's dinner together. My next guest today is she worked in the Egg Harbor Township School District in the autism program for 16 years. In all, she worked in over she worked for over 40 years helping the lives of special education students and their families. Joining me today, please welcome Dr. Bonnie Sebastian. Bonnie, thank you for being here tonight. Oh, thank you, Jacob, for inviting me. I'm excited to be here because I know both, uh, both organizations pretty well. So I'm excited to talk about it. Yeah, Bonnie. So my first question, tell us how you got started with both of them. Well, um, Patients for Autism was a work connection. Um, they reached out to me, which was so exciting because I was new to the area and we were just starting the autism program in um, Egg Harbor Township. We only have one class. And Isabel uh, Mosco came and reached out and came in to meet with me and uh, telling me about her organization and set up our first Bubbles for Autism that very first April, which was so exciting. And basically, helped from the very, very beginning build a connection for my families that, you know, I was getting to know that um, I could introduce them to a group that was going to be their support system, their advocate system, and, and friends for the kids and the family. So that was really exciting. And then over the years, more recently, uh, FACES has joined with the 21 Down uh, organization that I'm involved with. So my children, we've done some joint parties and activities. So now my family actually knows uh, the FACES group as well. Um, so that that's pretty much my story there. They're a great group and, um, you know, I'm, I'm always trying to connect with some of their activities. Oh, yeah. And, and, you know, everybody works hand in hand, Bonnie, and they all work so well together. Right. Yeah, they're they're really wonderful. Um, now, for uh, the Field of Dreams, that has been a family um, lifeline, I guess. We moved down here um, in 2004, and my, my kids had no connection to activities in this area. So I saw a little blurb in the paper about Field of Dreams. So I I'm going to say it was then the um, spring season of 2005 that uh, I signed them up. And at that time, it was only Ashley and Christopher because they were school age. So um, I signed them up and they played their first game, um, both of them hitting off a tee and not really knowing anything about baseball. Um, and, but they really enjoyed it. And then um, I asked, because I had two other children with Down syndrome who wanted to play, but they were technically adults already. So I asked if they could join. And of course, Field of Dreams, being the wonderful group that it is, said, sure, who cares how old they are? Let them play. So they began to get involved. And to this day, we haven't missed a season. And, you know, they love it to pieces. So it's just been wonderful. They love their coaches and their friends. Um, but to tell a more personal story, Field of Dreams has been a lifesaver, literally, for my son, Christopher. When he started playing um, the first two seasons, I guess he had, he has Down syndrome, but he was very physically capable and was learning baseball. And then he got sick in the summer of 2007 after, just after the season ended actually, and ended up being hospitalized uh, in Children's Hospital of Philadelphia for four months. Um, it was very, very um, touch and go as to whether he would survive um, and, Finally, um, they were able to like uh, get him to a level where he could talk again. He's on a ventilator, uh, has a trach, but you know we kept saying, you know, we're going to try to get you home. We're going to try to do all he kept saying was, play Field of Dreams, play at Field of Dreams. So he went from there to a rehab for three months, and actually we told them about it. So they tried to like do things that were baseball like to get him kind of excited about it. And so he ended up coming home from the hospital in February of that year, February 20th, some things you never forget in life. And uh, he came home in February and that April, 
He was back at Field of Dreams. He has a wheelchair full of equipment. He has a nurse. <laughs> but Field of Dreams was like anything goes. That's the way you are now. If you can, if you can do it, we're gonna welcome you. So um, now he doesn't need a tee. He can hit the ball out of the park and he can run with somebody pushing his wheelchair. So it really has been um, the most special place to my family, that's for sure. Yeah, Bonnie, and it's stories like that, that, you know, make people feel warm and fuzzy on, on the end, because, you know, like you said, Chris was touch and go for a long time. Yep. And, and, you know, we don't know one minute to the next what what's going, what your daily every day is going to bring. So, uh, this was just remarkable. And now look how many years have gone by. That was two thousand and seven, and he still hasn't missed a season. And he still is all about Field of Dreams, Field of Dreams, and the calendar. He also loves the calendar they send out, so he could look to see how many times he's in it. But. Um, it's just, it's just been a huge part of my kid's life and I'm sure other families feel the same way. So. Oh, oh, certainly. I've interviewed everybody and yeah. you know, everybody said, well, Feel the Dreams has done so much for my life and my kids and coaches. So yeah, Bonnie, do you have one particular memory that stands out? <clears throat> You know, I was thinking about that, but I feel like there's just so many, you know, just seeing them all be able to play and to have friends. And so I don't know that there's one. Um, we like everything about it, including um, when they, well, one memory that was important is how excited my kids were when after COVID, they opened up the dinner section again so they could have their hot dogs at the table. But, um, cause they love the eating afterwards too. But I can't say that it's one memory. There's too many after all these years. And, oh, and yeah. even the fact that there's coaches and volunteers involved every day. So as a mom, I get to sit on the sidelines and cheer instead of like worrying whether my kid's going to run off the court or you know, the field, I mean, or do something. So, I mean, I just think it's just been well, so well designed for everybody. Yeah. And yeah. And well, you know, we're all there for each other and. Yeah, and it shows. Yeah, and it really does show. Okay, Bonnie, if you could give any anyone any advice as to why they should join, should give their time back and volunteer for the Field of Dreams, what would you say? Well, I would say don't miss the opportunity because it is the most warm and wonderful place. It's just all fun. First of all, there's competition in that everybody wants to hit the ball and everybody wants to do a good job, but there's never, it's just such a, you know, that wonderful system of tying. It's just such a positive environment. The kids themselves, and so many kids have learned to play baseball. I mean, they really can hit. And if you're interacting with those kids, you can't be sad and you can't, Feel like you're wasting your time like it's so positive and all the coaches and the other volunteers and the people that give their time there are so warm and friendly that I can't think of a volunteer job that would be more rewarding than being a part of that that group yeah and you know and I said this many times tonight to a couple other people that I've interviewed you know People come back year after year, time after time, because it's it's so enjoyable and people want to help. They want to come back. Right. Absolutely. If I wasn't bringing my own kids, I'd be coming anyway. So it's, uh, it's that fun. There you go. Any uh, last thoughts, Bonnie? No, other than I'm so grateful for it. And, you know, I'm glad to have this opportunity to participate in, you know, a fundraiser because it's a wonderful organization. I want to make sure it lasts a really long time. Oh, and we all do. Ladies and gentlemen, please continue to raise your funds. You know, faces have faces in the field. We run 12 months a year, 365 days a year. We don't stop just when the summer ends. I'm working with Faces, the field, 
you know, just because it's summertime, yes, we may take a week or two off, but we don't stop. Right, yeah, things, it, you guys have to work year round to make sure it's available and ready to go in the summer. So that's an important thing to remember. Yeah, so friends, thank you. If you have questions, reach out to me and I'll connect you with Dr. Bonnie. So thank you, everybody. Thank you.